بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah that this Mubarak month of Ramadan, it passed by so, so swiftly and so quickly. And these are those moments that we have to sit and reflect about what the whole objective was. What did we actually achieve? What did we do? What did we accomplish? And this is something very important for us to take into consideration is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do anything and does not command us anything that doesn't have a purpose. The entire deen is a purpose. Salat has a purpose. Fasting has a purpose. The Prophet ﷺ so beautifully in one hadith says that كَم مِن صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ مِن صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعِ وَكَم مِن قَائِمٍ لَيْسَ مِن قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّهَرِ this, is, this hadith is a point of reflection. It's a point for us to understand that nothing in this religion and in our deen, because it's divinely inspired, it is not something that a person just made up. What's the objective? Why, if, if, if religion was made by people, why would people want to keep themselves hungry? It doesn't make sense. You wanna, if you make things up, you want to do it that it's, it's like fun, you know? Like you see cults. And these made, were man-made religions, they do things that they take people's money. They don't give money to others. They, they take women to themselves and they, you know, exploit people. Religion doesn't teach that. They don't, you, you sleep more, you don't sleep less. It's things that benefit the nafs. It's not things that go hard upon the nafs. So there's an objective. And here the Prophet ﷺ is saying, how many a fasting person fasted the month of Ramadan, but he didn't get anything from his fasting but hunger? Just think about that. In other words, this whole month of Ramadan passed is the objective only that us to go on a diet for one month and then remain hungry at the end and then eat days there and just you know, start eating and making up for all the 30 days you missed out? Even though the Prophet ﷺ told us that these days are days of happiness. These days are days of eating. These days are days of festivity. This is the times to spend time with your families. Some of the children were playing in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. They're singing songs and they're playing. And the Prophet and, and Abu Bakr Siddiq came inside and said, What are you doing in the house of Rasulullah? ﷺ? And then the Prophet said, Oh, oh, Abu Bakr, leave them. This is their, their, their day of Eid. Look at the beauty that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. The balance. You know, we have brothers, you know, 10 days in Atakaf is just completely cut off from everything. You know, and then night prayers, and then day fast, and then, you know, you have all, you become overwhelmed with all of this worship, and you're on a very high level, and then you have festivity and playing. Abu Bakr Siddiq comes in and says, what is this in the house of the Prophet ﷺ? Playing and singing, and the Prophet ﷺ leave them. Oh, Abu Bakr, this is their day of Eid? Let them be happy, let them enjoy, let them be festive, let them be joyous. The, the beauty and the balance of the Sharia is amazing. And when we lose that balance, this is when we lose our deen. Because this deen is, is nothing but, it is, it's, a, it's a balance, it's an it's a, it's a equilibrium, it's a harmony of, between being a human being and being able to also attain those angelic, prophetic traits the prophetic traits, which are very, very sublime, they're very great, they're holy, sacred, and sanctified. But at the same time, we can't forget to be human beings. Can't forget that we're humans. And if you forget your human side and you neglect that side, it will come back at you with, 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 a, you know, with, a, with a viciousness. It will demand from you. So we have to be balanced. There's a time for this and there's a time for that. I know that on the day of Eid, subhanAllah, we hear about certain people 
Subhanallah, you know, piousitis, you know? Piousitis. They get, you know, so super pious, you know, that they're coming. Why are you happy on this day? The Ummah. And I tell you, this, is my, this was my Eid message, that on this Eid, we're not as happy as we are on other Eids because of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I can't be. It's hard for me to smile and it's hard for me to enjoy. Wallahi, the food doesn't even go down my throat. Every minute I'm thinking that there's children that are headed to the graveyard and to the cemetery. Food hardly even goes down my throat. I feel a sense of guilt in my heart. But despite that, brothers and sisters, we cannot lose that equilibrium and start becoming like, you know, saying, oh, why are you happy on this day? This is a day of happiness. It's a sunnah to be happy on this day. And when it comes to our brother, other brothers and sisters, we do what is within our capacity of making dua for them and remembering them and voicing our opinion against them and voicing our outrage against them in whatever way it might be, not remaining silent. We will never remain silent. If it's terrorism on the side of Al-Qaeda or it's terrorism on the side of the Israeli government, both is terrorism. And if you're not calling out one and you are calling out the other, then you're a hypocrite. Those are terrorists. They're not no government. Anybody who supports them are terrorists. Just like they ask us, you know, oh, do you condemn ISIS? Oh, do you condemn Al-Qaeda? I say, do you condemn the Israeli soldiers? If you don't, you're one of them. That they're going inside of the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, Masjid Al-Aqsa, with their shoes and shooting and tear gassing women and children, dragging women with their hijabs? This is not terrorism? What is it then? It's state-approved terrorism, and that makes it better for some reason. No, we will call both of it. Just as you require us to call out ISIS, we do. We, are, we, we condemn it. It's nothing part of Islam, but why don't you condemn that? Why don't you condemn that? So, w without, with, you know, without going off of topic, my point is, is that we will, in every way, shape, or form, in whatever we can, voice our opinion. We will not remain silent about it. We will say what we have to say about it. This is within our capacity. We will protest. We will show our displeasure towards this. We will not remain silent about this. But at the same time, we have to understand here amongst our families, amongst our community, and amongst our children that Eid Mubarak should be there. Some of the brothers I say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say Eid Mubarak today. This is not even, what are you talking about, man? You know, don't go to that level where you forget your own, you know, your own family. What do children know about these things? Subhanallah, even in Masjid Al-Aqsa, they were having hundreds and thousands of worshippers there for Eid, and they're, they're even enjoying, because life goes on. We learn from them. They're our teachers in sabr. I wanted to read a hadith. What a beautiful hadith the Prophet ﷺ said about the people of Aqsa. It's almost amazing. I read this hadith, and I said, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You would imagine if something like that happens in our Masjid, would we even have Eid that day? Fire bombs. And, and tear gas and people getting dragged and people getting killed on sight. But look at the subhanAllah, it looked like as if nothing had happened. Look at the pictures of Eid Day in Masjid Al-Aqsa, as if nothing had happened. And look at this is the hadith. They are our teachers, brothers and sisters. We learn from them. We learn from them sabr. We learn from them patience. We learn from them steadfastness and istiqamat and rida bil qada being pleased with Allah's decree and hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil taking Allah as our wakil taking Allah as our helper what did they subhanallah this hadith of the prophet la tazalu ta'ifatun min ummati ala din zahirin they will continuously be a group from my ummah they will be dominant li aduwihim qahirin and they will always be dominant and above they will have the, 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 they will have the, 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 the hand over their enemies. لا يضرهم من خالفهم They will not be harmed by those who try to oppose them. إلا ما أصابهم من لأوى Except a little bit of difficulty and hardship that they might experience. Otherwise, they don't get harmed in any way. A little bit of difficulty is there, but does it harm you? Subhanallah, that when you see the images of Eid Day, you see that they were not harmed by anything, even by those. Subhanallah, did anything even happen? Literally, it was like two days ago. And on Eid Day, it seemed like nothing had happened. This is Sadaqa Rasulullah. لا يضرهم ما ضرهم They did not even get affected. 
and they were having subhanallah toys for the kids and playing for the kids and you know it was joyous and everybody was happy and then we were enjoying and you're thinking to yourself ajib subhanallah did everything did anything even happen that day was this all all these images were real but these are the these are the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given something to every people and how can it not be when the Prophet ﷺ said about Sham that Sham is a place where the mercy of Allah Ta'ala covers them? Sham wal Yemen, these are the two places where the Prophet ﷺ has spoken about them and honored them. So he says, لا يضرهم من خالفهم إلا ما أصابهم من لأواء. They will not be harmed by anyone who opposes them or tries to harm them except a little bit of hardship and difficulty. حَتَّى يَأْتِيَهُمْ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ Until the day of judgment comes or until they leave this world. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked, Ya Rasulullah, وَأَيْنَهُمْ Where are these people? Who are these people? And where are these people? He said, بِبَيْتِ الْمَقْدَسِ بِبَيْتِ الْمَقْدَسِ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدَسِ is Jerusalem. The Holy Land. They will be the people of Baytul Maqdas. وَأَكْنَافِ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدَسِ and the surrounding areas of Baytul Maqdas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them such iman, such faith, such patience, such sabr, that they will be an example. That when you look at them, brothers and sisters, you will know there has to be something in these people. Do you know, brothers and sisters, some of the uh, supporters of human rights who are non-Muslims, who have gone to Palestine, who have gone to Jerusalem, who have gone to, to, to Al-Quds, they say that there is something else in these people. Non-Muslims. That there is something else in these people. There is something that is strengthening these people. We don't know what it is. This is the miracle of the Prophet ﷺ. We know what it is. It is nothing but Iman. It is nothing but La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah in their, in, their, in their hearts. That if it was something or some other people, any other people would be going through the same thing, they would not be able to handle it. It is Allah Azza wa who fortifies their hearts. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Those people who say our Lord is Allah and they have istiqama on that. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels descend on their hearts and the angels inspire them with أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Don't fear. And do not grieve. Don't fear of what is yet to come. And don't grieve of what you have lost. Subhan, do, do you know, what is all of our anxiety in this world? What is our anxiety in this world, brothers and sisters? Our anxiety is we fear what is yet to come. Death, what's going to happen? We fear what is yet to come and we grieve over what we're going to lose. When the angels descend on the hearts of those people who stay firm on their iman, after they have steadfastness, they said, this is my deen, this is Islam, you know, the world can go wherever it wants to go. I am not going to leave this. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. This is what it is, even if I have to give my life. When you have that attitude, then what happens? Allah strengthens your heart. In what ways? La takhafu. You're getting this whispering in your ear. La takhafu. Don't fear. Wa la tahzanu. And don't grieve. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ And glad tidings of paradise. الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah and His angels, they are making this announcement. We are your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. How is it possible for people to do this? Some of these, like I said, human rights, you know, journalists and these people who gone there, they said, you know, it's, it's, aston it's, it's, it's astonishing. It's astounding. What is this? How can you do this? How can you accept such humiliation? How can you be treated like this? How can you allow this? How can this go through? How can you not, you know, be able to, you know, run away and... It's because Iman is in their hearts. There's one word, one word, Iman. That's it. And when a person is at that level of Iman, and they have that istiqama upon Iman, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angels to fortify those hearts. Do you know who the angels are? Angels are the one who were sent in the battle of Badr. Angels were the ones who were sent to the prophets. Angels were the ones who were sent to Musa alayhi salam. When the, when the, when the ocean was being split apart. 
Angels were the ones who were sent in the battle of Uhud. Angels were the ones who fortified the prophets. Angels were the ones who fortified all of the awliya of Allah from the beginning of time to the end of time. Angels were the ones who destroyed armies. Angels were the ones who destroyed Ad and Thamud. Angels were the ones who destroyed all of these, these wicked people. Angels are being sent upon your heart, on the heart. How can you now not, not imagine that that one child or that one you know, Philistine woman can stand in front of an entire army? It's not out of the question. This is miracle in front of our eyes if we will only see it. Sometimes we tend to focus only on the negative aspects of something. When we see it, we said, oh, you know, how sad it is. You know, see, it's always Muslims that are suffering in the world. Yes, they are suffering. But how are they dealing with their suffering? Do you see anybody committing suicide? SubhanAllah, a guy over here loses his job and he goes and he kills himself in the whole post office. <laughs> he kills himself and he first, he, before killing anybody else, why? Because I lost my job or I got an F on my exam. And here, bomb falls on his entire family. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. What is this? Why are you looking at the negative? Allah is showing you. What is the solution to all the problems? It's not money. This person has all the money. This person has all the comfort. He has his social security. He has as much of, you know, this and that plan and this plan. And he loses his job and he loses his mind. But these people, what is it that they're not losing their mind? What is it that they don't lose their hearts? They don't lose themselves. There can be nothing but something that is not from this world. It's something that is not from this world, my dear brothers and sisters. When you look at those images, take Ibra. When you look at those images, don't become negative. Don't become weak and don't become sad, and you will be dominant in Kuntum Mu'minin. La tahinu wa la tahzanu. Look at the Qur'an. Is this not haq? Is this not the truth? Do you need any more proof? Do you need any more of a miracle? This is the miracle. Wallahi, is a miracle. I was like, when is this picture? This is Eid? It's like nothing happened. They don't even care. They said, come and firebomb us again. Do it again. We're ready to do it again. You did it to us, we're ready to do it again. You bombed us, bomb us again. We're not going to give up. These places where they go to bombard, this is, this is the words they use, we'll bombard them back to the 7th century. What kalam is this, brothers and sisters? What, what rhetoric is this? What word is this? Is this what gives you people meaning? Does war give us meaning? Does it give you purpose in life to oppress? Does it give you purpose in life to destroy? Huh? We'll bomb you to the 7th century. Those same people who said that 20 years later, they're walking out with all of their troops. After 20 years or after 30 years, they say, we'll bomb you back to the 7th century. Who did they send back to the 7th century? The people who are in the 7th century, they're always going to stay there. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> How are you going to bomb people from back to the 7th century when they're there already and they ain't going nowhere? So keep, keep it bringing. We'll keep on bringing kids in the world for that. I mean, the, what the point is, is that people don't understand is this thing does not give us purpose. We are, hu we, are the, we are a family in humanity. We are a family in humanity. War should not be the thing that gives us purpose. This is, a, this is, the, this is the concept of, you know, New York Times best-selling author Chris Hedges has a book written, War is a Force That Gives Us Purpose. War is something, why does that give you purpose? Why doesn't compassion give you purpose? Why doesn't fairness and e equality give you purpose? Why doesn't, you know, compassion and mercy give you... Why is this something that, does, that gives us... This is what should give us purpose. Love for humanity should give us purpose. Helping one another should give us purpose. If, if we could all live together in Philistine and, and, and all of them, if they, could, if they wanted, they could have. But there's, there's, this evil, there's this evil qualities and shaitanic influences there. That it's war and it's discrimination and it's oppression and it's persecution that makes us feel good and it gives us purpose. That shouldn't give us purpose. Compassion and mercy and living together gives us purpose. Subhanallah, under the Khilafah Uthmaniyyah, the Jews and the Christians, they lived in so much peace. There was protection, there was love, there was everybody living together. It doesn't have to be, oh, we're, gonna, we're the ones in control. No, we all live together. We all worship together. They had, you know, 
you know, the, the, the birthplace of Jesus Christ and the synagogue and the wailing wall and the subhanAllah, Masjid al-Aqsa, it was all there and everyone shared it and everyone had love. Why can't it be there? Because there is this shaitanic influence. And I will also want to make this announcement that this is what we are for, that everybody should be together just like they always were together from the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab. From the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Where he went into Bayt al-Maqdis, he did not destroy any of the churches. He went into Bayt al-Maqdis, he did not destroy any of the synagogues. This is our tradition. This is the tradition of Khulafai Rashidin, that we live together. He went inside the, the, the church of the sepulcher. Sayyidina Umar went in the church of sepulcher. And in a direction because there was no pictures there, he performed salat there. Or some say he performed it outside. But the point being is, yani, this, this harmony, why can it not be there? This is not what we teach. This is not what Muslims are about. This is not what Islam is about. This is not what the Khulafai Rashidin were about. Go and shoot people in the middle of a, of a masjid. Go and shoot people in the middle of a, of a church. Is this what we're about? This was never what we were about. Omar radiallahu went inside these places of worship and honored the places of worship. And allowed the people of, of, of things. And this is, what, this is what we're about. This is what we should always be about. But what, what are we supposed to do? Allow to be humiliated? And anyways, these images and these pictures that we see on these Mubarak blessed days and nights, this is not something that we should become disheartened when we see them. Rather, it should increase our iman that the Prophet ﷺ has told us this. It mentions in one hadith that ummatihi, ummati hadihi ummatu marhuma. This ummah of mine is an ummah that the mercy of Allah. This ummah will not have any punishment in the hereafter. Any hardships that they see is in the life of this world. This is the words of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. So sometimes when we see these disturbing images or these hurtful images, we might think that, you know, why? Ya Allah, why? Because the Prophet had said so, that this ummah, Allah's special mercy is on them. They will not have any difficulty in the hereafter, but any difficulties that they may see is only in the life of this world. And those difficulties are what for them? It is a kafara to dhunub wa raf'u darajat. And Allah Ta'ala wants to take some people who will be shuhada. It is an elevation of status and a, and a compensation for their sins. So what we see in front of us, this is not something to become grieved. لا تهنوا Don't become weak. ولا تحزنوا And don't become sad. وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين And you will be dominant as long as you are true believers. And what are the true believers? True believers never want fighting. They never want war. They never encourage terrorism. They never encourage hurting and desecrating of the holy places. They never discriminate against people or hurt people because they're not of the same faith. Whether they are Muslim who do this, to try to hurt other people because they're different in faith, or they're non-Muslim who do this. We don't, we don't support that. But what we do support is that we should always defend those who are the persecuted ones and those who are the oppressed ones. And we make dua for them on this Mubarak day of Jumu'ah. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin fi mashariq al-ardi wa magharibiha ya Rabb al-Alamin. Allahumma ansuri ikhwanana wa akhwatina al-Mustadafina al-Mazlumina fi Filistin. وفي وفي شرق تركمانستان وفي يمن وفي أفغانستان وفي الشرق والغرب والشمال والجنوب وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلق محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.